This is the third video in a series on Jack Router for Windows 7 64-bit. In this video we're going to cover how to use multiple instances of a virtual MIDI piano keyboard and QSynth in order to get all that into Jack Router so that you can combine multiple sounds and play them with just one sound card. As you can see I have four instances of QSynth sending all the audio that outputs from each of them into the inputs of the sound card. I'm just using stereo. I'm using uh, an ASIO sound card from Native Instruments called the Complete Audio 6. I'm also using VB Cable's ASIO bridge so that I can take that audio, record it, and then play it back and listen to it, see how it does. Because we've used the port audio uh, dash uh, capital X W I N M M E in the port audio, which is in the Jack the Jack audio thing here. I think it's down here. This yeah dash uh, capital X Win M M E that allows you to use this MIDI stuff, otherwise this won't show up. So once you put that into your port audio, and again the first two videos cover that, so I won't go into details on this. So the setup here is this MIDI port right here is my M Audio MIDI keyboard. In Jack Router I'm able to send that information, that MIDI data, over to multiple virtual MIDI cables using Loop MIDI. And you can download that here. All these links will be in the show notes. Then I set it up to have eight cables because I'm going to use four cables just for the input to VMPK and then out of the outputs of VMK you have to use a separate virtual MIDI cable so I'm going to use the other four to send it over to the input of QSynth. And since the output of QSynth is already in Jack Router as audio then everything works pretty good. So as you see I'm sending to uh, loop uh, this loop MIDI cables 1, 3, 5, and 7 and that's what VMPKs, all four in instances of VMPK individually is listening to or respectively. The outputs of VMP VMPK are is 2, 4, 6, and 8 which is where QSynth is listening. And I'll go over these details in just a minute. And the idea behind having multiple instances of VMPK and QSynth are these all these different sound engines is with one MIDI keyboard during a live performance you can have uh, layered sounds. So just as an example I'm using flute and fiddle. I'm using a harp. seashore sound. So during a live performance if you wanted to add all these together this is this is something I thought sounded pretty good so let me play just a little bit of it and then I'll come back and give you the details on how to get all that set up. So I'm just using one general simple sound font and there are many out there that you can use instead of the one that usually comes with QSynth. Uh, so there's just all sorts of sounds and there, you can layer as many of these as you want but you have to have individual virtual MIDI cables to get the job done. So that's the first software you should go ahead and try to find and that link is right here. Just download this right there and then set up as many cables. You're going to need two cables for each instance of QSynth and VMPK that you want. Here's the QSynth. Now this by itself won't work with ASIO so you have to go here to this link and study up a little bit and he's, they have made one so that you can download on a personal site. 
So if you go here and get that, this one right here, you'll download that. And it comes with two files. You just take those two files into QSynth. Let's see if I can find those for you here real quick. And you just have to transfer them. So you'll have a new library, or lib fluid synth dll. So you'll carry that over from the file, and then you'll have an additional one, port audio underscore x86 dot dll. Just slide that over to this file here, and then you'll get a warning that says, "Hey, but just have them rewrite it, and that'll be all right." So you brought in those two files from here and just put them in this file here. Just drag them over and then you'll be good to go. Then you'll have a port audio that shows up and then you can choose your ASIO driver. So you can read that article for a little bit more information. And it's very simple really. It's not that big of a deal. Then you'll go you're going to need a sound font for QSynth and this is the one I'm using. So you just download that and go into QSynth and tell it where it's at. So edit. Let's go to the setup here. Go into sound fonts. You can see I already have it. So you just open it up. So mine would be down. So there's the general after I unzipped it. And there it is right there. So you just click that. Open. I've already done it so I don't need to. So now you have a sound font. Without that you're not going to get any sound at all. And then for the setup, you have to enable MIDI input. Make sure that's checked. It usually is. For the audio, the options. usually comes with D sound, but you have to change it to port audio. And then make sure it's the same sample rate as your ASIO sound card and jack router. And I'm using everything at 256 for the buffer size. And I use two in general for everything. Two audio channels out. And for the audio device, Instead of your sound as your sound card, make sure to use Jack Router so you can get everything in there and rewire it as you need. And I think that's it for that. The uh, I'm listening again. So all these loop minis, you have to figure out which one goes to where. So this is receiving from VMPK that is listening on three from Jack Router. So it receives the MIDI keyboard information to play a note on 3, sends that information out with what, which instrument to play to the QSynth on this MIDI cable 4. Okay, so that's that. So you can see that this VMPK is just lighting up that That, uh, so let's take a look at this one here. So in VMPK, MIDI connections, I have them all checked. So again, I'm listening on 3 from Jack Router, which is this one right here, number 6. So my MIDI keyboard sends data out to this virtual MIDI cable. And then it sends the output, goes to 4, over to to there. And you just set that up accordingly to each instance. It's not very complicated. Okay, that's about the only settings you have to worry about there. And this already has, you may be familiar with VMPK. Again, this does not play on a normal sound card. Like right now I'm using a laptop, so it's you're not going to hear it on the laptop when all this is set this way. And preferences, I didn't change anything here. I think that's the stock preferences, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, let's see. I believe that's all the settings that you have to worry about once you set up the mini loop. Jack Router, again, you need to watch the first two videos to set that up. And that's Carla's information. So let's go ahead and try a little recording here. 
I'm already using the hi-fi cables and the first two jack router videos tell you how to set that up so we'll do a little recording and see what happens here here let's see what happens let me make sure that you can hear it okay okay that sounds pretty good so that Audacity is a very easy way to do this when you have the ASIO bridge hooked up and then you don't have to worry about going for a paid uh, audio recorder that will show up in your ASIO bay and Audacity is fairly easy to, to get along with. Okay, I think that's basically everything. Um, let me show you the configure screen of Carla that I'm using. Again, we're using the audio driver jack versus ASIO, and then the multiple clients is the other one. That's all I have on that. And I think that's basically it. The, these have already been covered in the first two videos. These, where to get the ASIO bridge and Audacity, KX Studio, I'm using both of these, this is where you get Katia, and this is the Carla, which I found very find very useful. And here's in this link here tells you how to put that dash X win MME so you can get those MIDI drivers into the Jack Router Bay. This is where you download Jack. And there's just a little information about VMPK. That's where to download it. Again, that's where the sound font is. That's where you pick up the extra two files you need so you can get ASIO support for QSynth, which is described in this article and downloaded here. And all made possible by Tobias. Thank you, Tobias. And uh, especially thank you, Falk TX, who's the creator of this great software here for Jack Audio. Okay, that's basically how to set everything up. If you want to explore with different sound fonts, sound fonts, you may get a lot more different items than I was able to with just these four here. There's just a limited amount in here. There's plenty of uh, searches you can to find other free SF2 files so that you can experiment with others. But it's nice to be able to layer this, and then if you had a live performance. You could play something like I just did and lay your sound to get a more complete sound instead of having to rely, rely on loops. Okay, I think that basically covers it. Thanks for watching.